it was the first time that I ever dealt with uh, prejudice in seminary, so it's a Christian environment. I had uh, three roommates and me. Two of the roommates moved out uh, within the first two days because they didn't want to room with a black guy. When God chose you, he knew what he was getting into. Yeah. He knew, man, yeah. he may lose his temper. Yeah. But see, God would never give you the invitation oh if he was overly concerned about your limitation. God's got this plan for our lives as we know, but you've had the courage and the guts to work on yourself, to chase that path, to plow the field, to plant the seeds, and it's just prepared yeah, you for this you. like season of your life, brother. Welcome back to Max Out with Ed Milet, and today's show is a special one for me because I asked all of you who you wanted me to have on the program, and these same two or three names kept coming up over and over and over again, and this legendary, name, this legendary man's name kept coming up. And so I'm really happy for all of you and grateful myself that you've given me this time here today. So I want to welcome the great life strategist, coach, Minister of Hope and Faith to People, Tim Story. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean that too. Yeah. yeah. So grateful that you're here, my friend. So we've just started to get to know each other. Yes. We have so many mutual friends and mm -hmm. we're in this world together. But I, uh, we were at dinner together the other night. Yeah. And you started to tell me a little bit about your story and we got cut off and I was in the middle. My wife and I got back <laughs> through and I go, I want to hear the rest of this story, right? And so I know most of you know the after with Tim. If you follow him on social media, you've watched Oprah Winfrey's show. You know, he is the guy that most A-less people go to when they're in a crisis or they need help or they need advice, they call on this man. And so, and today you get to call on him. Yes. But when it started out, everybody was calling on you, right? Mm -hmm. And so tell him a little bit about Little Tim Story's story. Little Timmy's story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Compton, California. When I say that, I don't say it in a negative connotation. So much great stuff was going on in Compton as, as a kid. But we were a lower income family. We had mm -hmm. seven people in a two bedroom house, but it was a super small house. Wow. And, but I learned a lot of respect in that house because we had my father, my mother, my three sisters and my brother. And I was the youngest by far. You're the youngest? Yes. Okay. So I, I had to really learn how to respect women in a certain way because, hmm. you know, we had one bathroom. Oh my God. And so you always had to be careful to make sure like when your sisters are going in and out. Yeah. Uh, so I learned a lot about uh, respect and then my mother, who was actually Spanish, um, so mixed heritage. Really? Her big thing was always, don't do a halfway job. Don't do a halfway job. Hmm. So my sisters knew how to mow the lawn, wow. and I'm, I'm phenomenal at washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so even though we were raised in that cramped environment, my mother worked at Winchell's Donut Shop, okay. and my dad worked at a place called Bethlehem Steel. Okay. So it, it, was, it was a real good training ground mm. for me becoming Tim Story. Did your mom speak Spanish in the house or English? Uh, she spoke Spanish in the house uh, for a long, long time. Okay. So I, I understand uh, quite a bit of Spanish. But then later, uh, she really wanted to get her English down. Okay. So she was speaking predominantly English, but she still sp speaks very broken English today. Is that today. right? Yeah. Is that right even now? Yes. Is that right? That's amazing. So you, grow, you start in Compton, but somehow you end up in Atlanta eventually, right? When does that happen? Well, what happens to me is that um, I'm in Compton, California, okay. and we, we moved out later to, to East LA, to another yeah. part. Okay. Uh, I then decide to go to seminary. How old are you now? Uh, right this second? No, 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 when you go to seminary. Okay, when I'm, when I'm in, I go to seminary at 18. Okay. But it's an interesting thing, because I was an athlete and I did pretty well. Um, I, I love football, yeah. baseball, basketball, and but I, I felt that I wanted to be a humanitarian. And if someone was to say at that time, who do you look up to, it would have been Mother Teresa. Because wow. I'd read a book about her life, about how she was a school teacher, and she would go to school to teach uh, fourth grade, and she'd see orphans outside in front. Mm. And she started feeding the orphans, it went from four to 20 to 30 to 40. She then goes to the head of that uh, Catholic school and mm -hmm. says, hey, I think I better do something about it. And when I read this, it touched my heart. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to seminary wow. to become a humanitarian. So that's when I went to the South, to seminary, to become a humanitarian. I never knew that I had the gift to communicate. 
I, I went there because I was going to be God's hands extended and, and help the underprivileged. That's amazing because because I grew up outside of where you grew up in Diamond Bar. It's not the same environment. Yeah. But I kind of understand like you grew up in Compton. You're yeah. a good athlete. Yeah. You come from a family that's like the family that you described. Not every guy in those families is going. I want to go to seminary. Yes. When I'm 18 years old. So was there was there did you were you raised in the church? Were you raised with faith? So that was also around you. That was part yes. of sown into you at a young Which age. Which I think was very important to me. Hmm. Uh, two things. One was faith. Second was sports. Okay. Because the, the faith of going to church and hearing about principles, yeah. character, yeah. being compassionate, being nice yeah. to people, has been something that I've been known for for all these years. But sports, as you know, yep. by having good coaches, yeah. Man, the coaches, they brought yeah. greatness out of me. Yeah. You have, uh, can I ask you something about you just off the story? Just yeah. I've observed this about you. I'm just curious. I don't know that I've met somebody who, I'm, I'm serious too, so inspirational and you transfer energy so well, but really so poised. There's almost like an elegance about your demeanor. Thank you. I mean that. Did you have that when you were a little boy? Has that always been part of you, or did you learn that as you? I just, it's the yeah. number one thing I noticed about you that I think, there's just this composed elegance about the no, way you deliver you. things. Um, well, it <laughs> almost <laughs> makes me emotional. Yeah. I think that uh, mm, it does. I, I feel blessed to be me. <laughs> you know, so yeah. um, mm. growing up again with sisters and respecting them, yeah. uh, respecting my mother's mm. hard hard work. Mm. Um, even though I was good in sports, I didn't I didn't need to talk about it. I didn't need yeah. to show off. Yeah. Um, then I saw guys that were elegant mm. and powerful. Mm. Like, I, I look at a guy like Sidney Portier. Great example. Uh, such class, mm. such style, mm. and yet very understated. Yeah. And um, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, only a fool tells his whole heart. Wow. And uh, I was always a master chess player mm. in my mind that mm. I knew I was going to be Tim Story, but I didn't feel a need to tell people about That's it. That's amazing. That is the single thing that stood out about it immediately with you yeah. is that style you have. It's a grace almost. There's a peace about it. Almost like you're so confident and have so much faith that I don't think you feel like you need to throw it out there all the time. just wanted to tell you I saw Thank that you. in you. It's really a powerful thing that you have and unique. Um, go to seminary. Yes. You're there, 18. Yeah, not the there. normal place. Not every dude in your neighborhood was going to seminary. No, 18, right? and so I'm, I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, first time I'd ever been in the South. Uh, so it was the uh, first time that I ever dealt with um, prejudice because I remember mm. um, in seminary, so it's a Christian environment, I had uh, three roommates and me. Okay. Two of the roommates moved out uh, within the first two days because they didn't want to room with a black guy. Oh I'd never faced anything like that. In yeah. fact, when I was in school, I don't remember having one enemy. I was yeah. funny, I was happy. And so, probably popular, good athlete. Right? Yes, good and looking. so, so when I found out that they didn't want to room with me because I was black, that really threw me off. It was mm. a, it was a, it was a strange thing. It did not hit me with anger. Mm. It didn't make me want to be a revolutionary. Mm. It just threw me off. It just threw you off. <laughs> yeah, it did not something you experienced before. Yeah. So you end up with one roommate. Everybody else has three at the other places. Yes. Yeah, so we we ended with with one roommate, and then it actually became a challenge, because they interviewed five more guys before two took the position of, yeah, I'll, I'll room with the black guy. Because yeah. at that time, we had just a couple of black guys that were on campus. So that, yeah. was, that was a very interesting thing where I thought, because it was religion, it would be a, a kumbaya yeah, moment. Yeah, you would, if like, anywhere. Yeah, the, if we're going to be all together, it's right. kumbaya. Yeah. Let's go help change the world. Wow. But um, the adversity in my childhood always helped me with those kind of things. I remember my roommate that stayed, uh, was trying to push my butt and says, doesn't that bother you? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine this guy did this? I said, ah, uh, you know, it's okay. Mm. And I, I don't respond yeah. when people are expect me to respond a certain way. Mm. And uh, a saying that I've been saying for years now is don't get dramatic in the midst of the drama. Mm. I could have 19 dramatic things hit me at once mm. and you will not see it happen. Mm. My right arm could be blown off 
Hmm. And you won't know my right arm is blown That's off. That's amazing. That is the number one quality of the really great leaders, people of influence that I've experienced. They're not always, when you also have this, they're not always the best orator or yeah. the most calm. It's one of the things even that I noticed. Uh, one of the things I like, by the way, there's no political figure that I'm like a huge fan of. I'm just yeah. not political. But one of the things I admired about our former president, about Obama, yeah. was that. He just seemed to have an elegance and a grace and a composure and a calmness 100%. about him yes. under pressure. I don't agree with everything for him politically, but it, it, what it did is it makes you feel safe. Yes. It gives you a sense of calm when the yes. leader is that way. So you just, obviously, you manifest that big time. So you go to seminary. What happens from there? I know I'm a product in my life. I think you are, too. I'm a product of, obviously, a lot of hard work, my mm -hmm. faith. But also, I've had the, the Lord's delivered the right people into my life at the right time. Yes. And but the key thing is, I was looking for them and I identified them when they were there. I took advantage of that relationship in a good way. What happened when you were at seminary? I know somewhere along in there, some really good men got a yes. hold of you, didn't they? So, what took so place? we're side by side in, in that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Is that um, I really believe that the the emerging of of Tim's story, the person, the brand, and what I've become is because of the power of partnerships. Okay. Where, where people saw me and they saw that this guy's got something. Mm. So when I was in seminary as a freshman, there was a guy that was 10 years older. He'd gone to seminary late. Uh, he, was his, he was in his senior year, but he was 10 years older than me. And he was from South Carolina. He says, Tim, you got something about you. Mm. And I, I really wanna help you out. Mm. And he said, I do this thing that's for the ROTC and I'd like you to come and start speaking. Ah. Well, I had never spoken in front of a crowd before. Okay. Uh, I'd never been in Toastmasters. Uh, I'd maybe taken one speech class in eighth grade. So this was not something that I thought I could really pull off. So he literally coached me in my, in my style and in my teaching. But mm -hmm. what I found that I did not know is that I had a really funny sense of humor <laughs> when I spoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the ROTC guys, you know, military, were laughing and enjoying it. And I was telling stories of David and Goliath that were funny. And the guy says, Tim, holy schmoly, you got a gift. Mm. But here's what was cool about it. Mm. He said, um, I'm supposed to be doing this for six more months. Once a week, they love you so much. I'm giving you the gig. <laughs> and you get paid $50 every week. Well, that <laughs> meant laundry money. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> that was laundry money and gas money. So that was literally your entrance into this space eventually was literally from yes. seminary ROTC speaking to these guys. That's literally how all this that, that's That's how it all started. Oh my gosh. And them listening to my stories and laughing and me saying, wow, I'm on to something. And then as seminary continued, um, I met with some people, I created a Curriculum for inner city kids. Okay. Because now it's going into my mother Teresa yep. faith. Serve people. So I found a, a tough area where mm. the seminary was, and I began to go into the schools and speak on goal setting, you can do it, set back to come back. Wow. And how did I do that? I was studying Norman Vincent Peale. You were. Think and Grow Rich, mm. Robert Schuller. And I was taking those dudes and yeah. putting some swag to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so how's that grow into, and I don't want to leap too far forward, but that guy who's throwing some swag into it, speaking to this group and then going into the inner city, ends up then sitting with Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Ends up working with Steve Harvey, right? Yes. What's that journey like? Like, how? What, did, did you just start chasing your passion? Because there's no plan for that. Like, there's all yeah. these entrepreneurs watching this, mm -hmm. business people, right? They're watching this. They're like... I don't, I have to, they think they have to have like the perfect path to go where they want to go, right? There's just, yeah. a, there's a certain part of just expecting a miracle, right? There's, there's yes. a certain part of your life, but speak to that a little bit. Like, how do you go from there to this like really world renowned figure? You've spoken yes. in front of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people by yes. this time. What's the biggest crowd you've spoken to? 85,000. 85,000 people. At one from, time. From that little room when yeah. you're, <laughs> you're speaking yeah. to this guy's group for 50 bucks, right? Yeah. How'd that journey happen and what advice would you give to entrepreneurs like This that? is something you're gonna understand 100%. Okay. Okay. Proverbs 12, 11, he who works his land shall have abundance. Mm. Whoever chases fantasies lacks wisdom. There's my life. Mm. He who works his land, what's my land, Tim, story? If you're in the fifth grade, work your fifth grade land. If you're a single mother, work your land. Mm. If you're overweight, Work your land, get in shape. Wow. He who works his land shall have. Mm. 
Mm. The word shall means certainly, it's fixed, it's mm. determined. Mm. You shall have what? Abundance. Abundance is overflowing, more than enough. Wow. I am freakish at working my land. Mm. I am a working machine. Mm. I, I'm in the middle of eight companies. Mm. I'm doing movies at a high level. I'm doing plays, uh, rehab, recovery, which we'll talk yeah. about later. Yep. Uh, I'm in the middle of the restaurant business now. Um, I'm working my land, mm. so I'm up most mornings about 4.45, like you, yeah. I go to the gym, yeah. I'm working my land. Yeah. So Vesentita Gonzalez, my mother, when she was so hard on me to do the dishes correctly, mm. she was teaching me to work my land. Mm. So one thing you will always get from me is I will damn work my land. Yeah. And you saw that by me showing up on time. Absolutely, early. Yeah. So yep. the, the posse that I'm with today, yep. I told them many times, I said, okay, let's go, let's go, mm -hmm. let's go, let's be on time, yep. turn your phones off, let's be on time. Yep. I'm freakishly that way, yep. but I will tell you something, I worked my land and it gave me abundance mm. because it's the law of the harvest. Mm. And I'll work you through this, it'll take me literally 60 seconds. Do it. You gotta plow the ground mm -hmm. to plant the seed, to water the seed, to get the harvest. Yes. So your whole life Parable of the sower. is what's happened to you. <laughs> right. Okay? Yep. You you've been plowing, plowing, yep. plowing, 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 yep. plowing. Okay, hard work. Planting, 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 planting mm. by faith. Yes. Watering by faith. Yes. And payday's on its way. Yes. So payday hit you and your wife yes. in this wild way. Why? Because yeah. it says it's gonna happen. That's right. He who works his land shall have mm. abundance mm. overflowing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we recognize in each other. I love that. About we, you. We, yep. we, we saw each other yep. and we recognize yes. the God flow, the yes. God overflow. Yes, that's exactly right. Yep. I see that on you. I saw that abundance on you. The other thing is this is that I, I sense that most of your confidence comes through your faith. Right? 100%. And me too. Yes. So there's all these guys out there teaching these strategies of how to become more confident, techniques and things like that. And there are things you can do, keeping promises to yourself, but that's actually based in scripture as well. Yeah. So most of these techniques you hear are actually riveted and based through scripture. And so when I meet another man, yeah. any time in my life, there's a connection where I go, his confidence is rooted in his faith. Yes. That is a depth of confidence that most people won't get from some technique or strategy, right? 100%. And so, so people that are watching this that that are in the business space that go, hey, listen, I've tried, I've been planting seeds. I have been working where I am and there hasn't been this harvest, this abundant harvest yet. What would you say to them right now? What do they need to hear? Well, one of the things is that you have to make sure you work in the right land. Good. Yeah. See, there's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. Just because oh, you're pretty wow. doesn't mean you ought to be in a beauty contest. Mm. Just because you can sing doesn't mean you should be on American Idol. Mm. Just because you can talk doesn't mean that they should be you or me. Yeah. And so when I'm working with people, a lot of clients, they are misplaced in their position. One of my boys is Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen played for USC. Mm -hmm. Then he went on, as you know, mm -hmm. Oakland Raiders yeah. becomes a Hall of Fame running back, yeah. right? Yes. One of the greatest running backs of all time. Yes. When he started at USC, they had him at fullback. He was taking a beating, man, because mm -hmm. he, he had to block for the running back. Mm -hmm. He's taking a beating, okay? The running back goes down. He's the one that approaches the coach and says, that right? hey, you got to consider something. That's right. Put me a tailback. Mm. Mm. They put him a tailback, he wins the Heisman Trophy. I didn't even know that. Yes. Oh, okay. So some of the people that are watching today, you're in the wrong doggone position. Wow. wow. So it takes guys like us yes. to help reposition them. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Yeah, so you work in the wrong land. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That is so good. Speaking of that wrong land, I want to talk to you about that. Yeah. There's like a million things I can ask you when we have this little window, right? Because I think that's so profound too. I mean, you keep beating your head against the wall, you're working the wrong you're land. Working the la you're working the wrong land. There's no, there's no grace on what you're doing. Mm. See, because here's the deal. When, when God's favor is on you, God's favor is God's blessings, bestowments, little extra. Mm. You got favor and I got favor. Absolutely. Quincy Jones said to me, he said, here's how it's gonna work, Tim. You take all the energy that you did towards helping all those hundreds of thousands of people speaking to 75 countries, but some countries I've been to 80 times. I've been to 75 countries, but some I've been to 80 times, okay? He said, you take that, 
You shift it to the entertainment business, and I'm telling you right now, you're going to take over. Wow. And so I am. Wow. That's the space that you now, and that's why you're in that space. I'm in that space. Okay. Quincy said it would happen. I put my faith to it. I work my land. I work my butt off. Mm. And bam, I do it. Why? Because I have favor. You have favor. That's right. Okay, so watch this. Okay. Favor comes on the person. So favor's on your person. Yes. Favor's on you. But favor's also on your path. Because just because I have my favor on my person doesn't mean it's on that path. Hmm. Is, is that just so oh powerful? Oh, my gosh. From someone, from someone who's in this, like, I'm going to steal that from you. Just so you know. Don't steal it. Because it's so damn true. It's like the truest yeah. thing. It's like, Favor's on your person, but it's not on that path. I turned down a gigantic movie today. Did you really? A gigantic movie. Okay. It's a $30 million movie. The guy says, I'm going to make you a producer. Mm. Tim, whatever you want. I, tur I turned him down today. Why? I'm already doing another big movie. Mm. Then I got another movie. Then I mm. got two plays. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to do it. Back to back He to said, back. How, how can you do this? Do you understand mm. how much money you're going to make? Mm. Don't take me off my favorite path. Oh, my gosh. I love that. So favors on my person, favors on my path. By the way, people constantly give into that temptation to leave their path too. Right. Most people will not see their path to the end of the harvest. Isn't that true? That's they the constantly truth. get diverted off these paths all the time. Yes. So it's one thing to be on the wrong one, but when you are on the right one, follow it to the there, end of the there's path. There's the answer, the answer, the answer, the answer, the answer. You just hit the answer. <laughs> so it's it's Dorothy needing to go back to Kansas for the Wizard of Oz. Watch how cool this is. So she says, how do you get back? Follow the yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. How do I get back? Follow the yellow brick road. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the scarecrow at one time, he takes her off the path. Yeah. He, that boy is going to catch fire. Okay. <laughs> the, the tin right. man. Right. The yep. tin man's yep. going to get water on him and yep. bam. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. The the cowardly lion has an emotional breakdown and mm -hmm. needs a therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, the wicked witch and even Toto takes her off the path. So be mm -hmm. careful who you partner with. Mm. You got to have people in your posse mm. that keep nudging you back on your yellow brick road. Wow, that is eight men. What's amazing to me for y'all, ah, for those of you that are watching this, I'm like getting so excited. Because <laughs> here's the thing in this space, brother, listen, in this space, it's a sound chamber. Everybody says the same things. Yeah. You don't. You, you say the right things. Thank you say, you. I mean, it's like it's an absolute fact. It's like, by the way, I say one thing I notice on you, just so you know, they, yeah. they might see this camera. You can see God's goodness on you. Thank you. <laughs> you can see it on you. Thank like you. there's a the reason that you're that look at you. The reason that so <laughs> many great blessings are now coming your way and have come your way in your life is you've sown these seeds for decades into other people's lives yeah. and it's on your face. Look at you getting emotional. But I just want to say it's like I yeah. interact with certain people. It's like you can just see God's goodness on yeah. you, brother. Thank you. You really can. <laughs> look at you. And uh, see that's the difference between religion and relationship. Like I really I know God. I know you do. We're, we're, we're very close. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so favor's on your person. <laughs> it gets it's you. on your path. Yeah. But it's on your efforts. Mm -hmm. See, people have said to me for years, isn't all this stuff wearing you out? Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. It's not wearing too. me out. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why it's not. Yeah. Because I have favor. Mm -hmm. I have favor on my efforts. Oh, I love that. This is very, very powerful yep. stuff. Yeah, it is. So, as you know, yep. Wherever God guides, he provides. Yes. So all these doors that he has happening for you. Because, yes. you know, as, as I've studied you now the last two years, mm. look at your life, man. I'm yeah. proud of you. Thank you. I really am so proud of you. Thank you. You got so much going on. Thank you. You're going to go into the TV space. Yeah. And you're going to do phenomenally huge. Thank you. I'm going to prophesy another thing to you. You're going to be gigantic in Europe. Thank you. Europe's not going to know what hit them. Thank you. You're, you're going to be so big in Europe. And I'm going to tell you why. There's a void in Europe for you. Really? There's, yeah. a, there's a gigantic void. Hmm. A lot of the big boys, they cannot translate to Europe because yeah. they're, they're bringing in an American type of way hmm. to Europe and it's not working. How do I know it? Because I'm in Europe all the you're time. Yeah. A yeah. guy like you, you're going you're gonna to blow Europe wide open. Thank you. Just watch what happens Thank to you, you. in the next 24 months in, in, in Europe. I feel that's all yes, my chills. I'm, I'm telling Thank you what's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love that kind of So prophecy. watch this. Okay. So favor's on your person, it's on your path, but it's on your efforts. Mm. So, so we are anointed mm. by God to do what we do. Yes, that's right. 
That's right. So that's why we feel yes. a supernatural energy and a surge and swag. Yep, I do. I can feel it from you when it's you're ours. talking. Yes. When you, just over this path for a second, by the way, thank you for that prophecy. Like, it makes yep. me feel like a million bucks. Thank yep. you. It's real. Well, a lot more than a million bucks. So people are on this path. I know you're working in this space too. And I just want people to hear this because I think there's a guilt. There's a shame sometimes that yep. comes with There's these people out there that they want to win in their life. They want to do better. They want to chase their path, but they're shamed by some skeleton. Yeah. Some behavior, some addiction, something yeah. they've got going in their life, right? And they think, well, I'm not worthy. Like, I'm saved by the grace of God. Yes. I'm a sinner saved by God's grace. Exactly. Right? Like, I'm yeah. not sin free, neither are you, right? right. Mm -hmm. So that gives me such comfort. Yes. It doesn't give me permission to sin, but it gives me comfort in knowing I'm still saved. I can yes. still have favor, right? And I think a lot of you think, well, but you don't know my sin. Yeah. You know, my sin's a worse sin. I'm, I'm glad you're bringing that up. Yeah, I'm addicted to this, or I look at that, or I'm doing this. And so they've got this thing, they see their path, they, they're willing to put the work in, but this anchors on them that I've just got this thing I can't tell you about or I'm addicted to. And one of yes. the spaces that I'm super proud of you for working in is people that are working in addiction space as yes. well, right? You're, yes. you're just you're so wonderful, man. This is the difference you make for people. Talk a little bit about the work you're doing in that space because you know that I come from a family yeah. riddled with addiction. My dad's been sober for many years, but I yeah. grew up in an alcoholic, drug addict type family. Yes. I know the dysfunction that creates the stress, the anxiety, the mm -hmm. hardships, and it gets passed to generations, yes. right? I don't know if it's a genetic passing or an environmental passing, but it's passed, right? Well, you, you hit it, you hit it so tell both us about ways. That. It, yeah. is, it is genetic. Yeah. And it is in environmental, so it's 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 learned behavior at times. Yeah. And so for me, um, you know, many times you don't realize how dysfunctional your family is hmm. until you get older. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're like, you, th you think you think everyone's family's this screwed up? Or yeah. Something then when you're like, right. then you're like, wow. <laughs> wow. How do I get out of there? And then there's three things that can happen. You can get intimidated, frustrated, or you can get motivated. Hmm. So I feel like guys like us, instead of just getting intimidated and frustrated. I got motivated to change. Me too. But at the same time, I had inherent weaknesses that I did not know I had mm. because they came from my father mm. and my father's father. Yeah. They were passed down. Me too. So, you know, I, I would say that the biggest setback I've had in my life is to, to be divorced. Mm. I married into a very powerful family. Oh, okay. And I married into a family where uh, I still call my father-in-law. He was an aide to three of our presidents. Oh He's a brilliant man, double doctorate, and married to his daughter for 13 years, and it doesn't work. Mm. It was like, wow, we should have like dated three times, and that was it. Mm. There was nothing there. There was no energy. She mm. didn't like what I did for a living. Mm. She didn't like the energy of, mm. of what became Tim's story. Yeah. And it was, it was a very difficult thing, mm. because divorce is divided force. So you have force, and now I had divided force. And it was the first time that I felt that people could pick on me and really have good information. So a little bit legitimate criticism. Yeah, yeah. that's a good way of saying yeah, it. Yeah. So they're like, wow, look at him, oh, Mr. Happy, Mr. Everybody. Yeah. I know for a fact he went through a divorce. And then people can then start rumors and start things. Yeah. I will say this to you, I, I did not handle it well. Mm -hmm. When I say I did not handle it well, I, I was never verbal. Mm -hmm. I, I never fought back, I never protected myself, mm -hmm. but I was inwardly, inwardly in a lot of pain. Yeah. I felt a lot of pain and a lot of shame. Mm -hmm. I really did, okay. for a long time. And that comes with everybody's m mistake or misstep, with that, right? That's, I think, where you're going down that track, too. I just yeah. want to jump in on that. Like, it could be your divorce that gives you shame yeah. or pain. It could be your drinking that does it. It could be your drug addiction. It could be your addicted to watching porn. It could yes. be your... You could be. You don't know how lazy I am. You don't know how often I make a promise I don't keep. It could right. be those things, right? What's the path out of that for somebody? The the, the path out of that is number one. Um, but what's Psalm, the path out for you? The, Psalms 103 says that God does not treat you as your sins deserve. The word "treat" is a very interesting word, because most people are, are used to a treatment, and like let's say if your father's bothered with you, he may not say something, but it's a look. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, yeah. I didn't even do anything, just give me that look. Mm -hmm. So he's treating you, or yeah. the mother that maybe would give you the silent treatment. Yes. So the Bible says God does not treat you mm. as your sins mm. deserve. Mm. So when we fail, we always feel like, oh, I deserve something. Mm. Psychologically wow. and emotionally, so true. we think we deserve something. You're right. And so that's very, very common when people meet me and they know that I'm a spiritual cat 
if they know that they're up to some bad crap, because I'm with a lot of famous rappers. Yeah. And they'll like meet me and they're like, oh, dude, you know, like, just so you know, I've been off, I've been off weed for like a week. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not even talking about weed. <laughs> it just comes out, their yeah. confession. So, yeah. so, so my way of getting around this is that God does not treat you as your sins deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those that fear him. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that even when I made bad choices, I still loved God. Yeah. I just didn't have my crap together, but I still <laughs> loved God even when I was making bad choices. Mm. And then last thing on this, it says, for he knows your frame. Yeah. The no in the Hebrew, the word is the word yada, which means more than he's familiar. It means he knows it, he knows it, he knows. Yeah. So this is an amazing thing about your life, okay? Coming from what you came from, yeah. when God chose you, he knew what he was getting into. Yeah. He knew, man, yeah. he may lose his temper, yeah. right? Yes. yes. He, he, he may get too feisty. Yes. He, he may, he may yeah. do something yeah. crazy. Yes. But see, God would never give you the invitation oh if he was overly concerned about your limitation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, brother. Do you love it? I love it. There's, this is, I'll just be honest with you. Okay? Yeah. This is my favorite conversation <laughs> I probably ever had. I'll be honest with you. Like, don't you feel good right now watching this? Don't you? you I just feel good. Yeah, like, God's not tripping. You know, I work with Charlie Sheen. Oh, my God. God's not tripping on Charlie. Wow. Everybody wants to get ticked off. Charlie's my boy, man. He wow. calls my mom to see how she is. Mm. Uh, God's not tripping on, on Charlie. Mm. He knows his frame. Wow. He comes from addiction. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. He's, he's an addict. Yes. Okay? Yes. God's not tripping on Robert Downey. I mean, mm. look at Robert came from. First time I met Robert, started working with him in 1998. He became Iron Man, yeah. what made $60 million last year. God's not tripping on our frame. Wow. He is not tripping on our frame. Wow. And that's so, so important that we don't paralyze our kids wow. in, their, in their current situation yeah. and thinking that's it. No, that's not it. Wow. He's going to make a way where there was no way. Yes. God put you in my life, just so you know. I just got this right now. Yeah. Literally. But each other. I need you. I, yeah. I need you. I, you. God puts you in my life. Like, I'm positive. It's like, it takes a lot to reach me. Yeah. You reach me. I know he's reaching you all. No, like, thank you for that, too. Brother, you're so, you're such a good man. Like, thank you I for that. I can feel it. You know, I can just feel I it. I want to say something about yeah. the recovery. My friend, yeah. Walt Ibarra, yes. is a cool guy. He's a businessman. Yes. Made a lot of millions. Yeah. And, and God began to speak to him about the recovery world. Yeah. He knows what it's like to go through pain, uh, even with his own family and addiction. Yeah. And so he started something called Marrow's Recovery. Yes. And we're going to put all the information we'll put down that on later. For it. Yeah. And I'd like to see maybe you even put it on your website. Be glad we're, to. we're changing people's lives. Be glad to. And so one of the things that he did, he said, hey, Tim, with your comeback background, can you come yeah. and just, just share? We call them clients because okay. we don't want to call them you know, patients, we yeah. call them clients. Yeah. And to every person, when Walt would see them, he puts a 10 on their forehead. Mm. That kid could be strung out on heroin just laying like this, yeah. but we put a 10 on their forehead because mm. we're speaking to that possibility. Yes, yes. And so, you know, in this whole recovery world yeah. that we've been doing through Merrill's recovery, yeah. we're seeing so many young people's lives change forever. Praise God. By speaking to the life in them. Yes, yes. They already know they're in trouble. Yes. Don't speak to the death in somebody when yep. they know they're dying. Yes. Am I set, what I would just say to you is I just learned something that I think I do pretty well. I want to yeah. acknowledge this. Yeah. I do that with everybody. I always speak to their possibilities. Yeah. Like I think that's the way to treat people is I to love speak it. to their possibilities. And we were talking earlier about your program. I definitely want to put that on the website. We're definitely going to put a link up for them there. Yes. And you talked about, it's not just people in recovery, talk about a comeback. Yes. All these people watch is like, I want to come back. Like, so if I'm watching this, by the way, here's what's crazy. Whether it be Robert Downey Jr. or Charlie or Oprah or Harvey or whoever yeah. it is that you've worked with, right? Yeah. This is what's amazing about the social media space access to something like this, yeah. the, when the, the elite or the best in their field, and I don't care whether they're an actor or they're the best school teacher in the world, both impress me equally, and I know they do with you as yes. well, right? Yes. But when the best in their field can get access to you, 
and everybody else here can as well. Yes. You can have access to this same person. You can have access to his inspiration, his mentoring, his coaching, his information. So I don't always want to do this at the end. Yes. I like to do it now. How does someone, I can tell them going, I, they're already, they've already searched you, they're already following you on Instagram yes, probably, right? right? Yes. But beyond Instagram, where else can someone find you and start to engage with you? How do they do that? Okay, so uh, at timstory.com, okay. we, we offer uh, some really unique mentoring programs. Okay. And, and one of them is I'm spending more time with people and uh, doing a 60-day program okay. to take you from recovery to discovery. And here's what happens. Most people, they spend their whole life in the recovery zone because okay. they're constantly trying to fix something about themselves. So this is the comeback, so to speak, isn't it? This is it? the comeback. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so we have different plans. Okay. One's a 60-day recovery program. Okay online mentoring, so there's a lot of things on timstory.com that they can go to. Okay. But let me just explain the comeback to you. Give it to me. Okay. It's really cool to know Oprah Winfrey because she's, she's like you and she's like me. She's very down, man. Mm -hmm. She's cool. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking about something and she said uh, about a person that was struggling and I said to her, now Oprah, you got to remember uh, a comeback is not a go back. A comeback is not a go back. Because mm. if they try to keep going back and trying to fix this thing, they're going to constantly be here. Yep. And here's the two things they're going to miss. They're going to miss here and they're going to miss here. Mm. They'll never be present mm. and they'll never be future. It's beautiful. Because yeah. they're always looking back trying to fix it. Yes. So it's like, it's like a, a woman who's having trouble with their kids. And they're constantly just going back trying to fix it, fix, fix it, fix it, fix it. Had I not got pregnant at 14, Fix it, fix it, fix it. Mm. A guy who's struggling, fix it, fix it, fix it. Okay. Mm. So a comeback is this. Okay. Okay. Number one, take responsibility okay. for your bad choices. Okay. And I work with, as you know, the most powerful people on the planet. Yep. But all over the world. Okay. I'm, I am life coaching people from all over the world, from India to South Africa. Europe, guys that own billion dollar companies. Incredible. Number one, doggone it, take responsibility. Okay. Man up. Okay. Okay. One super powerful celebrity you know, his manager said, nobody has ever talked to him that way. Mm. Nobody. Mm. You're lucky he didn't slam you up against the wall, mm. but yet you made the guy cry. Because <laughs> I said to him, I said, your dad was even intimidated, but intimidated by you. Said, "I'm not." I hey, said, man. "Man up and admit what you just did." Is that true story? He goes, awesome. "I did it. I'm sorry." <laughs> I mean, he's a famous guy. So, number one, man, take responsibility okay. for what you did. Okay. Okay. So own it. Love it. Secondly, get help. Mm. If you're in quicksand, okay, it's hard to get out on your own. Mm -hmm. So now the power of partnership comes in, okay? I need help. Okay, I gotta go Bible on you again. Go. Pity the man who walks by himself, Ecclesiastes 4.9 <laughs> says. Because if he falls, he has no one to pick him up. Most powerful men have nobody to pick him up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you a cool story that Smokey Robinson does not mind me telling the okay. story. Smokey Robinson was struggling with drug addiction and nobody knew it. Mm. The William Smokey Robinson, one yeah. of my best buddies, yeah. okay? He was struggling with drug addiction. So he's in a big mansion struggling with drug addiction. His friend found out that he had been missing for days. Mm. Keeps ringing the door, knocking the door, but he knows Smokey's gotta be in there because mm. no one can find him, he's gotta be in there. Okay. True story. Okay. Goes to the shed, somehow finds an ax, in a gigantic mansion, oh my gosh. axes down the damn door. Oh my gosh. Finds Smokey strung out on drugs in the bathroom on the floor. The Smokey Robinson oh strung out, dying on the floor. His friend loved him enough to take a damn ax and ax the door down. Wow. That's true partnership. That is true partnership. Give me somebody yeah, with an axe. No kidding, you're right. <laughs> we all want that person with the axe. Man, is that powerful? I didn't even know that. I've never even heard that before. Is yeah, that, that, is, that, that, powerful? that is powerful. So you got, I'm just processing this. So you got to take responsibility. You got to ask for help. You got to ask for okay. help. Okay. 
look for the right partners. But I, I want to partner with someone like you or me. Right. I want somebody that's been in the trenches. Yes, I agree. That's why they come to me. Wow. They do come to you. I'm coming to you now is what's actually going to happen from here. But that's what they come to me because I understand the crap. Yeah. My father died when I'm 10. My brother passes away because of drug problems. I got pain. Yeah. I got yeah. pain. So I don't care how powerful the person is, and, and their pain may be small to someone else. It's just TMZ did a story. I'm like, that, that's not that bad. Right. That's what I'm really thinking. Right, but, right, right. But they're like, what am I going to do? Right. But I understand the pain, man. Yeah. You got you to get somebody that understands. They, gotta, they, 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 they turn their test into a testimony. Oh, they, they, they gotta, they, they've been through it. Yeah. You're the most inspiring person I've met. You are the most inspiring. My camera crew's nodding. We've all done tons of interviews. <laughs> By the way, I have, I have unbelievable people on this program. Like, I, I love everybody on my program, but like, you're, you, here's what you are. You're anointed. So you were prepared for this. Your whole life's prepared you for this. All, 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 we, all the things in our life always happen for us, not to us. God's got this plan for our lives, as we know. But you've had the courage and the guts to work on yourself, to chase that path, to plow the field, to plant the seeds. And it's just prepared you for Thank this like you. season of your life, brother. Like you've had this incredible life, but I have this feeling this next decade is going to yeah. be an increase that's just unbelievable for Thank you. Thank you. It just really is true, man. Like I'm so excited that we've met and that we're yeah. going to do some some things together. And I just want to ring one last thing at you because there's oh, just yeah. there's just like all this. You have this you have this like I love this. He's got this like rhythm and this swag, <laughs> and he's got the scripture, but he's not too preachy. He's not over. It's like and he's got his own church too, by the way, right? Yeah. Your church is in your Belinda. In your Belinda. And, and that was a give back, you yeah. know, because church is um, risky business. Yeah. Because when you when you get a lot of folks together, <laughs> I don't you're, care. You're right. Man, it's yeah. risky business. The reason I started a church, because I want to go after these people that they love God, yeah. but they've been hurt by religion. Oh, boy. And so many have been hurt by religion, so many judgmental people, so many people, people putting people down. So we started in my house with 60 people. We now have over 500 people in just two and a half years. Unbelievable. We got a lot of celebrities. Yeah. We got a lot of down out people, drug culture, powerful people, people who do extremely well. People mm -hmm. drive from Pacific Palisades, Malibu, all the way from San Diego to hear this kind of message. This is how I speak every Sunday. Oh my gosh. That's just, I'm coming. I told you that I'm coming. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it's it. It's not that far from my home, so I'm coming. All right, we got like 60 seconds left. Yes. Okay. I'm inspired. I've been watching you. Yes. I've got access to you now. I'm now on TimStory.com. Yes. I've got this plan for my life. I've got some drive. I'm feeling pretty good. And Tim's got one minute with me. Tim can say, hey, brother, hey, sister, here's yes. what I want you thinking or doing. What would it be? Look right at him and tell him. Okay. What, this camera right, right here? Right there. Okay. Tell him. The whole idea is that you may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. Okay? <laughs> so it's very, very important not to just look at your losses. So you may not be what you want to be, but you're not what you used to be. You've come a long, long, long way. And that's what is working for you. Today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. Start today. Exercise today. Think big today. Read today. Meditate today. Get around positive people today. Today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. Your life is going to turn out amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> Everyone in here is like on the floor practically. That was my favorite conversation. I just, you're, just God bless you and thank you so much. Like I had no idea this was going to happen. And like now I want like 900 hours of this. Don't you? And I just have this feeling we're going to do some magical no, we're things gonna, together. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's so, a setup. Thank you so much. God bless Privilege. you, man. God bless you. You're such a good man. I enjoyed this so much. Anyway, everybody, if you enjoyed this today, I don't have any doubt in my mind that you did. I'm blown away. Do me a favor. We do this for free. I bring you some of the most incredible, favored, great people in the world to give you information. Top of my list is Tim's story after today's program. Just do me a favor. Whatever platform you're watching this on, give this thing a review so it moves up the ranking so that more people around the world, particularly in these third world countries that don't get access to this stuff, the further it moves up, the more they get access to people, these beautiful souls like Tim and they can become inspired and move their life forward as well. So please do that for me, everybody. Thanks again, Tim. Max out, everybody.